Dino City for the Super NES by Irem, released in 1992, based on an underrated kids film, Adventures in Dinosaur City, with Omri Katz of Erie, Indiana fame. seen the aforestated Adventures in Dinosaur City, God help me if I meet someone who hasn't, especially in real life no less, you should already be familiar. Two close friends, definitely not siblings, Tim and Jamie, portrayed by the earlier stated Omri Katz and Tiffany Paulston respectively, minus Mick, portrayed by Sean Hoffman, are seen in Tim's parents' lab, ready to experiment with their highly advanced science device. Within minutes, they're accidentally warped into their favorite show, composed of a Stone Age-inspired macrocosm, and are joined by two rad reptiles, Rex and Tops, portrayed and voiced by the combined efforts of Tony Doyle and Patrick Labierto, who was Ram Sweeney and Heathers, and of course the combined efforts of Mark Martirana and David Jolliffe, respectively. Obviously a T-Rex and Protoceratops, hence their singular shortened names. And if that didn't shake the apple cart enough, according to Flory, another supporting character no less, precisely a Dimorphodon, voiced by one Rob Sherwood, they're tasked with recovering a critical component, namely the fuse for the science device, from an infamous dopey gang of Neanderthals known as the Rockies, led by Mr. Big, portrayed in the film by Ari Mihailov, and also voiced by Labyrtho. But as one could possibly anticipate, tasks like those are easier goddamn said than done. No, no, that's what the fuck she said. Think you know platformers? And no, I am not mentioning any titles. Wake the fuck up! Cause this one plays very, very differently by comparison. Upon picking either Human Kid slash Dino Parent, inspired by Super Mario World no less, Tim and Rex, or Jamie and Tops, well, just for the record, the only way to select your pairing before starting is via not left or right, not select, not LRR, but the goddamn A button. And to quote JonTron, my honorable regards to him if he's watching this, it's the least likely button that you'd ever think to use in this situation. Getting back on track, the adventure begins through a chain of various surrounded by the earlier stated Rockies, including but not limited to even their one and only femme fatale, Cindy, who for the record, is created especially for this game alone. Filled to the brim with unexpected hazards and sidesteps, unpredictable as True Detective, Girls, Fear of the Walking Dead, and Looking combined, while later areas involve deserts, empty voids with a giant rotating wheel, again similar to Super Mario World, and even open fields with roller carts. In terms of controls, your traditional D-pad moves around your duo, the R button dismounts and remounts either Tim or Jamie from Rex and or Tops, yet again respectively, to allow for better navigation through tricky as hell areas, and even the use of their remotes to stun enemies. X and Y are used for attacking, in both cases Rex can punch and tail whip in combos, and Tops throws arrows. B and A are used for jumping, and can all take a while to get used to. And take note, regardless of whether your duo was separated or together, an instant life loss will ensue if you're slipping up, in terms of falling in pits or getting your ass handed back way too many times. Speaking of which, there's a 3 heart health meter at the top, which can be replenished at necessary intervals, and an extra life is awarded upon collecting 50 eggs. Tiny Toons Busters hidden treasure much? And when it comes to evading platform hazards, the timing can be very strict depending on your best judgement. In between various stage chains, like bonus areas, depending on which door you chose in the first place, and set case brown, where you can rack up on extra eggs and hearts, and are unfortunately timed. So if I were you, I wouldn't get too damn comfortable. At the end of each stage chain, a boss confrontation ensues, ranging from a rock-crushing Neander fucktard, known as Crasher, a pernicious pair of monster moles, a trample bird that summons more than its own offspring, a mechanical pole press contraption consisting of two blades and even a water fountain, two nefarious as hell prehistoric firebirds, and finally Mr. Big himself. While some of them are complete pushovers, others turn out to be wanton, unfair sons of bitch bastards if your wisdom and approaches happen to shift the bed at any given time, which they will. Should you happen to outwit any of them, you've passed your current stage successfully, complete with, get this, a 12-digit password consisting of letters, including a backward Z, numbers, and even randomized symbols. That aside, the controls are far from what you'd expect out of any standard as hell platformer, complex yet still manageable, and the gameplay procedure is questionable, yet far from hair-pulling and nerve-wracking, unlike Accolade's Bubsy franchise, or even DTMC and visual concepts lesser the unlikely. But seriously, let's not even get ourselves started with those turds. Challenge-wise, refer back to what I've recounted about the participating game elements, cause as always, there's no way in hell I'm repeating myself. Regardless of which character pairing you assume, this game won't pull any goddamn punches, and it's sure as fuck not gonna hold your hand or kiss your ass. Shit, no. Those Neanderfag Rockies, and even the harmful, if sometimes helpful, Dino Dildos will all but guarantee you don't leave alive. Compared to every other platformer out there, each area in Dino City will really push your skills far, far beyond your limits and commit every sin imaginable. 
For instance, in terms of evading certain perils, including falling platforms, tumbling boulders a la raiders, and especially, especially those dino dickwads in the jungle that'll devour your character briefly and hog them right the fuck out, and the like, your intuition had better be on the brink, cause they'll leave shit all but a scratch. In other words, you've really gotta bring your decuple A game along, cause you only get two lives, more of which, yet again, you can accumulate upon scoring 50 eggs, a couple of continues, and that egregiously advantageous 12-digit password system, for which I strongly recommend looking up online or jotting down for future evidence. The graphics are beyond impressive, especially for an early Super NES title, and my list of reasons starts in my current area, in this case my apartment, and goes around the goddamn block thrice. Notice, for instance, the day to sunset transition in the first substage of Area 1, and the sunset to evening transition in the next to last substage before reaching the boss. The main and supporting characters alike aren't half bad. I suppose Iron was trying to go for a more anime look to differentiate them from their original live action counterparts. All in all, I dig the overall visuals more than ever considering the game's age, though many might end up being turned off by them. Music and sound-wise, composed by Hiroshi Kimura, or Ebihara, if you will, of Super R-type fame, cause goddammit, Irem. This is where I might just end up looking the other way. Then again, why the fuck even bother? It's standard, hip and upbeat 90s fare, with some ambient tones for later diverse areas, some of which end up repeating themselves down the road. While most might dig the former mentioned style, I, on the other hand, do not. But then again, I truly hate to be way, way too harsh. Naive use of double standards aside, the sound effects aren't much to gloat over either, despite being somehow invigorating. I mean, they're just there for the sake of a rather definitive deal of whimsy. With that being said, my top 5 favorites from this game alone are as follows. Top Steam, heard in Stage 1 and in later parts of it. Jumble Jungle, heard in various stage areas, not just in the first. Track Race, Stage 3. Fight, the boss theme. And of course, the final area, Mr. Big's Castle. Concerning Dino City's replayability, in the booming interest of memorizing every abrupt enemy confrontation and pitfall after another, no pun intended concerning the latter, and even mapping out every semi-predictable boss pattern, this game is definitely something you'll be longing for like no other, despite its semi-awkward controls and mind ramping challenge, of course. Trust me, it'll make every LEGO game, cross with insert any superhero franchise and or fandom here, look like JVC and LucasArts defenders of Dinotron City. Henceforth, what's my final verdict on Dino City? In spite of not standing out like other big-name platformers, and even the sidesteps and predicaments that most might endure with this game, I'm in full unprejudiced belief of how remarkable and unbiased Dino City is by comparison. Therefore, if you're in the mood for a far cry straight out of the Stone Age journey like nothing else, I profoundly recommend giving it a claw through or two. However, my only few words of advice I suggest taking to dear hearts are as follows. Attrition, timing, and perseverance. Oh, and you won't be disappointed in the absolute slightest, oh no. Until then, this is the Hardcore Retro God proudly signing off. Yeah, that's right! Go piss up a goddamn flagpole, you cave-nug tramp!